Let's play some Watcher here. Call Shard into Reboot. I like that. How about lose six max health into Choose Violence? Oh. Lesser Violence. Choose Specific Violence. Secret Weapon is a very good card for Watcher, actually. One I will happily click on here. Pick an attack from the draw pile, such as, oh, I don't know, Eruption. Put it into your hand. And then give them the big bonk. The really big bonk. Interesting elite placement here. Hmm. How greedy do we get? That is my question. I like this line. And then there's red, elite into shop, into fire, or there's green, avoid the shop. The idea being here to use the extra money from the elite to buy a second Carter move. You need 175 gold for the first two Carter moves. We start with 99. You get an average of 15 per combat. So 115, 130, 145, 160, 190. Average of 30 from the elite. So that'll be plenty, even if we low roll on many of these. So that should be just enough for two Carter moves. And then we can go two more elites after that, including the burning elite. I like that path quite a bit. Star with the eight months of support. Summer's over, almost over. It's my favorite season. Definitely a, a fan of winter in general. I, I prefer to be cold rather than hot. I like the, the landscape of winter. I'm a winter guy. Give them the bippity. I like the secret weapon is helpfully not even glowing, just to prove to me that I can't play it. How dare you. Interesting cultist fight here as Watcher. Very interesting. 16 bucks at an ancient pot, plus an early bowling bash is the sort of thing that lets us take this elite confidently. I really like bowling bash as a common attack on Watcher. I think you could also argue for Crescendo here. You should never take Nirvana in this position. But Crescendo is acceptable. I think bowling bash is quite nice. I'm going to click it here. Especially with the secret weapon, fetching bowling bash seems extra helpful. Can additionally choose to add a follow-up here. That's nice and cheap. Not much else we can do here. Both Shuriken and Kunai in the same shop, by the way. It's kind of cool. I don't mind their loss. There's plenty of ways to scale a Watcher run. What I am going to do is remove a defend. Let's just double check. If I have 11 gold left, then we get an additional... 30, 45, 60, 75, we will not be able to afford anything at the shop. So if I want to fight that elite and go to the shop, we should not purchase follow-up. That's my conclusion here. And with the bowling bash, I think I want to. Save enough gold to buy a clumsy, of course. Get ourselves a colorless potion. And we can take a Sands of Time. Classic. Also works well with Secret Weapon. Noah asks, do I consider Reboot a poor card to build on Defect? Or is it Unfortunate Circumstances? I think Reboot is relatively poor. Its utility is questionable at times. Reshuffling your discard pile into your draw pile is not all that is not always useful, uh, and particularly on a character who's often trying to get a lot of powers in play. Uh, Reboot really doesn't serve to achieve that. It can work really well with builds that are more oriented around Claw or have a, a very low number of cards in general. Uh, but oftentimes, especially on higher ascensions, playing Reboot means shuffling a bunch of status effects that the enemy has added right into your draw pile. And that also limits its, limits its utility. 
I have any guide for deciding on starting path and whale choices? I really feel like I've got to plot some, some proper notes out on that and, and make a good video on it. It's such a context sensitive process that I find it really hard to give generalized advice about. The game of Spire starts by looking at the, the map and the boss, seeing what paths are possible, looking then at the options that the whale presents to you and trying to figure out a combination of path and boon that serves you well. That's quite hard to do. Grab that sense of time. And keep taking these combats. Shop locations can definitely play a big role in determining where you go. Whether you do or do not want to go to shops, you want to strongly avoid going to shops where you will not be able to buy something useful. And you want to path into shops pretty aggressively as you get close to 300-ish gold. Not so bad, Andy says, when do I learn to play this game? I've been watching for three years and you have a thousand hours in the game and still don't know what you're doing. I started to feel like I knew what I was doing around 2,000 hours. That was when I, that was maybe the first time I actually remembered Unceasing Top before it went off. And I felt like a genius. It took about 2,000 hours. Can the merchant sell the odd coin, old coin? I, I don't know, not anymore. I think there might have been a, a point in early access where they could have. Yeah, exactly. So, so if you feel like that, what I'm saying is there is a point where you will eventually remember it. You just have to keep playing. And he plans to raise the community's Spire's sub-goal. I feel like the meter fills up quite fast. It does fill up faster these days. We've also got September going on, which has resulted in a, in a lot of subage this month specifically. As a reminder, brand new subs are 30% off for the rest of September. Uh, and that includes a, a six-month subscription package deal. So you can get six months of sub for 30% discount if you are not subscribed to the channel already. That's pretty cool. I've raised the community goal a couple of times, actually. It wasn't always a thousand. I think I started it out at 500 or 700. I definitely originally created it based on my monthly rent. And uh, we've long since surpassed the point where I need to worry about that on a month to month basis. Totally different living situation now from five years ago. Speaking of our five year anniversary, which was yesterday. But it definitely started at 700. How do you pick more than six months of sub? Uh, you can't pick more than six months at the same time. Uh, to, but as you subscribe on a month-to-month -month basis, you'll you'll get an ongoing counter of how many year, how many months you've been subbed. So people accumulate, you know, one year, two year, three year, four year, and there are special sub badges for that. But you can only prepay for up to six months on Twitch. Um, do I want any of these cards? I don't think so. Although, this is not the world's worst warship. Interesting. I don't think I want to path into Mantra this early. I'll pass on that. Lose this ancient potion. Grab the power potion. The cheese stands alone! Thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Goosey Sub Club. We're now at the point where we're guaranteed to have enough money to remove at the shop. That's good. I like that. Don't you weaken me. You weakened me. You believe this guy? Better question, are we going to get to 0% potion chance? Again. No. 
Not yet, anyway. Could have had Prostrate Warship, just saying. Really like Prostrate as an early game card, uh, as our first mantra generator. I also really like Talk to the Hand as a way to block while attacking, especially with Secret Weapon, actually. That's particularly useful. In Estrex18, thanks for the two months of support. Saying happy September. Watching the stream made you repeatedly get back into Spire, for better or worse sometimes. Appreciate the good luck wishes. And Lauren Cates, thanks for subbing for six months in advance at Tier 2. The premium... Discounted premium package. Heck, heck yeah. Enjoy your extra cozy Tier 2 emotes and your accelerated weight rate of waffle generation. Some of the Tier 2 benefits. As well as, of course, your ad-free viewing for all subs. Shelly Pemba, converting from Prime to Tier 1, making it official. I think, I think that is also discounted through September, is converting from Prime to Tier 1. And then you essentially get an extra month of subage once your Prime sub wears off. Lauren says, that makes it my first ever Twitch sub, but I also got your first ever Watcher A20 thanks to the tutelage. So you're heckin' welcome. Walk around confirms, yes, you get a discount for converting from Prime to a Tier 1. Awesome. E-Dog02, thanks for the nine months in the Tier 1 sub. And Doom Train 404 Converting it from a Prime to a Tier 1. Thank you for using that September discount. Mango Tonics with 35 months in the Tier 1. How many cards do I think are harder to master than Clumsy, says Mizuza. Quite a few. Pain, for example, I, I thought was probably harder to master than Clumsy. Necronomicus, definitely harder to master than Clumsy. My favorite non-boss relic, Pocket Watch. Lauren Cates, thanks for five gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, folks. Get in there. So, well, Secret Weapon Sands of Time. That gives us maximum turns of discount. I think this is also a really good fight for a power potion if I were so inclined. I am so inclined, let's do it. Battle him. Definitely. Give me all of the retained damage. That should let us perfect this fight with accumulated power. Bank some more energy. And then this will be one cost next turn. Hopefully we're drawing Eruption next turn. If not, we should at least be able to block quite a bit. Let's just do some quick maths. We want to play Eruption for two. We'll have three energy left, so I have four energy to spend. So I can do Sands of Time in all three smites. That's 24, 24, 24, 40. 72 plus 40. 112. Plus nine. Yeah, that'll kill on its own. So we can just Strike Strike here. If we draw the Eruption, we have a kill. We have a kill. Nice and clean. And oh, we get a Molten Egg. Spectacular to get that so early. Although I'm a little sad we've already added three attacks to this deck. Any future attacks we get will be upgraded, such as Cutthroat Fate or Flurry of Blows. Wow, those are spicy. It's a very good start to a Watcher run. More than the Ironclad, I would say Watcher is the attack-based character. You can, more successfully than the other classes, build a deck that's entirely made of attack cards and thrive with it. Having Molten Egg, therefore, on Watcher is kind of like the Toxic Egg of other characters. You see Dolly's Mirror here. That would be useful, preferably after we have a card we want to duplicate and when we can afford it. But that's not a big deal here. We're just mostly here to remove a card. Lunar Huntress, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Let's lose a second copy of Defend here. And move onwards and upwards. Upgrades. Cat on the oven. Thanks for the Prime sub. And five months. Boot. I'm going to give you the boot. 
boot increases attack damage from four or less to five. With a molten egg, it's pretty hard to deal less than five damage. I don't think that's going to happen very often. So I'm going to boot that from the record. Can't quite kill the gremlin knob here. I'm thinking about playing Talk to the Hand Vigilance. That would bring the knob down to 45. We basically would have to redraw into Eruption. That's actually pretty easy to do. There are very few cards in the deck, and this is Scry 3. So, yeah, let's just play Talk to the Hand Vigilance here. Take three damage. Wait one turn. Yeah, and then we just play Eruption, save the time. We get 25 bucks in a mall bank. This will accumulate money every floor until we hit a shop. Two more excellent attack cards here. Empty Fist plus Consecrate. I like an Empty Fist here. Huge damage. And it helps us to get out of Wrath Stance. Way too startled. Thank you also for subbing at Tier 2 for six months in advance. Welcome to the Extra Cozy Sub Club. Heck yeah. I usually only... <clears throat> sorry, I usually only try to uh, to make gambles at Aaron W when the dice are loaded, so to speak. If the, the gamble is very, very likely in my favor, or I can guarantee something. And I, I felt like I could probably guarantee getting Eruption back in hand, or at least close to it. Given that we had a cut through Fate Plus. All right, you're dead. And you, you're Curly. You're also dead. Sweet. Get some money. And no attack cards? What? Wave of the Hand's not the worst thing when you've got a Talk to the Hand in your deck, but quite frankly, I don't feel like adding an unupgraded card to my deck, so I'm going to skip all of these quite happily. No idea how loaded the dice are. Yeah, that that's the first step. You must be one with the dice. Become the cards. Match and keep. Okay, here's a place we can get clumsy. We're looking for clumsy. The gremlin puts two pairs of curses on the table. If he is a very kind person, he will have put four copies of clumsy into this match and keep for us. We'll start in the middle. That's, that's what he won't be expecting. Eruption plus. And a writhe. All right, we found one of the curses. Let's go here now. Empty body and decay. All right, no clumsies. The you. Eruption plus. I am totally down for double eruption plus. Let's take that. And then now I'll look at the corner. Blasphemy. Opposite corner. Reach heaven plus. Bottom corner. Decay. Thank you, Mr. Gremlin, for the Eruption Plus. Cool. Very cool. It still looks weird when there's two of them. Hello? I often like picking up a second Wrath card on, on Watcher. Uh, usually it's not second Eruption, though. But the consistency gains are undeniable. You love to see it. Do I miracle strike? Next turn looks like a better time to do that. Yeah, because now the miracle lets us play bowling bash instead of strike. 
get him. Another perfect victory for the Watcher. We score the Teardrop Locket, allowing us to start combats in Calm Stance. That will make Double Eruption even more powerful. And Vault gives us an extra turn, which is very good, especially with Sands of Time. Yoink. Do runs ever come down to the heart of the cards? Every run ends at the heart. I don't even need to vault. You're just dead. Second talk to the hand upgraded or a second cut through fate upgraded. I think we take the second talk to the hand. We are definitely trending now towards a f just all attack card deck. That's great. Flurry is also pretty solid here. That's true. I would like flurry a lot more with double talk to the hand first. Krogzar says, I, I pirated a movie the other day. I gave it 3.14 stars. I don't know. That seems like a kind of a rational rating to give a movie. Big Bang Day says, how does the end turn work with the Time Eater's ability? It works the way you would want it to. Your turn ends and then you get another turn. Time Eater still gains two strength but you get to take two turns in a row. Do I think the Watcher is balanced? Mostly. I think the Watcher is, is balanced very well for the m vast majority of players. I think she only, only seems extreme in the hands of an expert. But in the hands of the vast majority of the player base, her downsides balance out her upsides extremely well. It's only players that are able to fully dance around the downsides of Watcher that are able to make her look so broken. Leon Aha says, I'm always surprised with which decks good people are able to beat A20 Heart with Watcher. I can't remember... I think we showed on stream one time, uh, we we did an Ascension 1 Watcher run where I wasn't allowed to add any cards to the deck. It was just Eruption, Vigilance, Strikes, and I removed all the defense. And we were able to beat the heart with that. If I had to pick one character to win an A20 run for my life, who would I choose? I feel like I would pick Ironclad. Statistically, I should pick Watcher. But if, if my life is on the line, I want it to be an Ironclad run. And then I want to get Feed in Act 1. <laughs> you know? Hello and welcome, Jizo. I try to keep a pretty speedy pace of play here on the stream. We average 90 minutes to two hours from, for one run. I think all, all speeds of play are valid, um, but there's definitely something to be said for the entertainment value of a faster pace. I think that was supposed to be eruption first. No biggie, though. Vault. Is that really wise to enter Wrath there? Probably not. That's okay. I can block quite a bit with Talk to the Hand. I might also employ a Colorless Potion here, now that I've sort of mindlessly allowed the boss to attack me for 48 damage. What do we got here? Apotheosis or the Blessed Violence. Apotheosis does give me more energy, which is appreciated. If you don't execute the plan, are you really even trying? Does the spire ever tilt me? It. I try my best to not let that happen. 
And I, I play in ways at times deliberately to avoid stuff like tilt. But I'm not completely immune to it. Yeah, I'll take the apotheosis here. I can discard all three and draw a different card? That's got to be the best option, right? There's nothing in the discard pile that is worse. This could give us Vigilance or something. Just a strike? That's okay. Could Gambler's Brew, or we can take the Loss of Health. I sort of did this to myself. Don't really love giving up potions. Especially unnecessarily. He's each block for six. We don't even take that much damage. I'll accept the hits. I accept all charges. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. Okay. I think I probably could have saved some health in that fight, but I don't hate what I chose to do. I do like Ragnarok in this deck a ton. Double talk to the hand would make Ragnarok block for 36 in addition to dealing 36 damage. And that is spectacular here. Now, avoiding tilt takes, a, for me, a deliberate mindset. Um, I, I was certainly the type as a teenager to get frustrated and occasionally rage at the, the games that I played. But eventually I came to realize that the, the game is predetermined and unchanging. It's not, it doesn't have any ability to respond to whatever I choose to do, be it violent or verbal. But I can choose to change how I react to the game. And that is ultimately what games are all about. The game can't change. You have to adapt your play style, learn in order to overcome obstacles. And those obstacles can be your own emotional obstacles, just as they can be actual video game obstacles. And once I started looking at it that way, I was able to, to just choose to laugh at the situations that happen to me rather than become angry at them, especially when they are really, really ridiculous, which they do occasionally happen like that. <laughs> that Spire is great at giving you ridiculous situations because it is mercilessly random. Truly merciless. Fusion Hammer? Interesting. What if I never upgraded any of my cards? I'm also kind of down for Slaver's Collar. Take extra energy, but only during the boss in elite fights, get the best of both worlds. I think Slaver's Collar actually is the go-to here, right? We, we take Slaver's Collar, then we upgrade Vault, and that's just as good as having an, an energy relic in the hallway fights for the most part. And we get double bonus in the elite fights. This is probably one of my favorite boss relics, the, the color. That all makes sense until you get to some of those Monster Train Covenant 25 expert challenges. Yeah, those are those are pretty merciless. There's, there's a reason one of them has a description that just says, sorry. Sorry we did this to you. Yeah, as Permapensive says, with Locket and two upgraded eruptions, I don't think this deck needs four energy. Uh, but note that we don't have any other option, right, other than more energy. So if we're going to take more energy, let's take the energy with the least downside so that we can use it when we need it. And when we don't need it, we don't really have it. Cap America, thanks for the 14 months of the Prime sub. Can we get a late shop? No, it's it's early shop. It's two early shops or no shops. Those are our choices. Weird. What a weird layout for the act. Huh. I I guess I'm down for removing all of the defense. Sure. Does the early egg make not make fusion hammers not so bad? I agree. It is a, a pretty good fusion hammer. 
but I think the color is just slightly better here. With the Maw Bank, no shops is a valid choice that we're allowed to make. But I'm very tempted by another double remove line. Get rid of the last two defends, and then miraculously turn all of our strikes into bite pluses. That's the line. It's the winning line, for sure. Oh, we can also go to one shop. There is a one shop line. That's way more reasonable. Oh, good talk. Excellent. I am pleased to see Bowling Bash here. Block for me. Thank you. Look at that. They barely, barely injured us. At all. So I can play Eruption, then Ragnarok, huh? I love that for us. Perish. Ooh. Unironically, Swivel is looking quite good. Crush Joints is also a great card for applying Vulnerable here. But I really like Swivel with Ragnarok and Sands of Time. It's also a vaguely helpful block card. Did we get matching keep eruption? We sure did. It was even upgraded thanks to the molten egg. I'm gonna take swivel here. You're not a vampire. Give me the vampires. This is outrageous. Let's just end our turn with swivel. Fun fact, swivel carries over between turns, so we can now use it to play this Sands of Time for free, having played Swivel on the previous turn. Third Talk to the Hand, or second Cut Through Fate, or first Crush Joints. I think we want the second Cut Through Fate, now that we have more energy. Would I duplicate a card for a third Eruption? No, I don't think I, don't think I would. I would probably duplicate Secret Weapon or Ragnarok. Or Vault. I'm going to take this cut through fate. I will take another talk to the hand later if we see another one. Although we actually have no guarantee that that would happen. We could instead take another Ragnarok here. Or a Prismatic Shard, which does have a chance of offering us violence. In addition to a card remove. There's also the Foss... Uh, not Fossilized Helix. The Incense Burner which makes us intangible. This is a really good way to defeat the heart specifically by blocking some really big attacks. If I was on an A20 heart run for my life here, this is what I would buy is Incense Burner. I think that's the, the single highest win rate choice from here. But win rate is not what we're looking for at the moment. We're looking for masteries to that, or really fun, unusual runs, also acceptable. And to that end, Prismatic Shard is great. I'm also really dying to know what Prismatic Shard Molten Egg will yield. Seems like it could be fun. Do I want to buy a potion? No. Good talk. I also don't want to go to the second shop. Just Master Reboot as the Watcher. Oh, we get another remove. Thanks, old beggar. Remove the final defense. Anyone vamping out there would really love to meet... Attractive vampires in my area, you know? Let's do the following. Times two? Intimidate is kind of interesting, actually. I don't hate Intimidate at all in this position. Have fun. I think we'd rather get an attack that applies weak, though. Sash Whip, Sucker Punch, Clothesline, Uppercut. Those would all be pretty good.
one might even say too good. Put like vigilance on top just in case the thing happens. Our drum leader attacks his next turn. Although he might have a kill. No, not quite. I lied, we did. Mercury Hourglass will do three damage to every enemy every turn. And what's that? A Dark Shackles Plus? Dark Shackles, I didn't know you were an attack card. How wonderful. Enemy loses 15 strength for one turn. You can use it and then play Vault. And it works just as well in Wrath Stance. This is excellent for a lot of different reasons. Very, very powerful card with the free upgrade, especially. Absolutely insane card. Pro tip, if you see Dark Shackles Plus in a card reward, definitely take it. I really don't care what context you're looking at. Absurd. And we'd like to maximize events. From here, we can get two more. Two it is, then. Although, ideally, I want this in this event, not this in this event. Because of reasons. What is the exact cutoff for Coliseum, actually? This thing knows. Twenty-seven. So yes, that is the floor after the chest. Cool. Neat. Bird nerds. Pretty lame Ragnarok here, but I've got nothing better to do. So, go. Fluffy Mittens, thanks for the tier 2 sub in the 42 months. Is your sub the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Must be. Sad call. So there's the clothesline I asked for. However, consider Blade Dance. Three shivs that block for up to six each. That's pretty spicy. Our only regret is knowing that we cannot get either Shuriken or Kunai on this run. But it's still a lot of block. Though it's bad against Time Eater. I'm going to want clothesline against Time Eater. Let's take the clothesline. Feels weird to take clothesline there, but we'll do it. Love the free Volna on turn one. That's good stuff. Oh, you poor sweet summer book. Maybe I, maybe I swift potion here. Let's try to get uh, eruption so we can really cause chaos on this turn. Let's do that. Perfect. Prepare to be destroyed. Nice. Our reward for that, bottled lightning, meaning we can bottle secret weapon, or perhaps even better, we can bottle vault and have two turns of vulnerable at the start of combat. Or we can get Apotheos 
Actually, I'm going to click on Sweeping Beam, unironically. That's pretty good. I'll bottle Vault. That seems spectacular. An altar to a forgotten god. She calls out to you demanding sacrifice. I don't feel like I'm going to need these hit points, so you can have some. Take a bit of max health. I actually don't even think that's a bad thing. Let's take another upgrade here. Upgrade. Could actually upgrade Bowling Bash. Let's do that. Bowling Bash is a really good way to kill Bronze Automaton, by the way. So I really, really quite like having the upgraded version for that fight. It's also quite good in this fight. Spectacular. Let's do Empty Fist, Eruption, Strike, Vault. We also get to do six more damage with Mercury Hourglass. Holding Bash does 30 times three. Boom. And just for extra insult, get in there, Hourglass. GG. We get all our health back. Ten more max health from the pair. Regen Potion can heal us as well. Do we want a Just Lucky? I don't think we do. I think we're okay. More potions. Ambrosia. That's a good potion. Lose this stinky regen potion. Give me instant divinity potion. We'll try to carry this to the end game. And let's fight a boss. I'm going to recall. There's nothing to upgrade here. Hmm. Convenient. Not a lot of opening damage, but we've applied our talk to the hand. Things are going vaguely well, I want to say. Though you didn't all have to attack me at the same time, you realize. Hmm. Bowling Bash does a clear 60 damage, so we can easily pick off one of these minions here. Could use the Ambrosia to just win vaguely tempting at this point. Or we could take this fight a little bit slower. I guess taking it slow is fine. This will still be 36 damage, though. I don't get to block for a whole lot here. Hmm. Maybe I do need to use Ambrosia. It definitely just solves the fight. Hmm. I could also just choose not to play Eruption here. Feels like a weird choice. It's actually not the worst choice. Hmm. Actually, I don't hate that choice. I'm gonna ignore the minions in this fight. I want Bowling Bash to hit for the full damage. This is more like it. want to swivel Sands of Time, just dish out the damage now? Or do I need to leave Wrath? Hmm. I guess it depends on how well I think I can kill stuff. We're losing Ragnarok, which is actually good. I don't want the random targeting. 
And I can also play Empty Fist. And we should do both. Do both. Do both. There we go. Seems like a kill to me. Good. Kept the potion. Quite happy with that. Limit break. With no shuriken. Bummer. Bias Cognition could gain a ton of focus, or Spirit Shield gives us block based on the number of cards in hand. Interesting. How's it going, Anna? We did talk a little bit about the, the Mega Crits announcement regarding Unity at the start of stream. Silly. Very silly. I'm going to skip all these cards. If only there were limits to break. I have only strikes. We could transform four strikes with Pandora's box. Or we could take a black star for more relics from elites. We got the green key already, so we can path max elites in Act 3. I like that quite a bit. Or Tiny House. We also have Slaver's Collar, further encouraging the black star here. Fancy homemade burgers. Tasty. I'm definitely going to have a food break after this run. I'm, I did not have lunch before stream started, and I am starving. I'm going to take the uh, Black Star. Let's see how many extra relics we can get. More relics, more fun. Not off to a good start. Bummer. That is a sad pile of elites. So it goes. We'll get two extra relics this act, one more next act. It's the thought that counts. Guess I don't want to take too many combats. They don't really serve us that much. Winged boots would be cool, although even with wing boots, we could actually we could do quite a few additional elites with wing boots. Those would pay off big. This would pay off pretty big. I'll kill you entirely with the hourglass if I have to, spell beast. Take it. Always have a spiker solution. Scrape. Wait. Er, no. That won't work. I would have to play two swivels to make swivel scrape into a thing. That's not going to happen. Backstab's pretty good here with the bag of marbles. Although damage on turn one is not the most important thing these days here in Act 3. In Act 1 or 2, I'd be thrilled by backstab under these circumstances. Now it doesn't seem as important. Does that actually work only with one swivel? I don't think so, right? Because you would lose the swivel effect before the scrape wears off. But it might be worth taking just for science. We gotta do science. For science. And for tea. Delicious tea. Colorless cards. Often cost zero. In addition to other benefits. Another Dark Shackles. Let's grab another Secret Weapon and another Secret Technique. Not going to take the Swift Strike, though. The Deck of Secrets. I 
There was also a trip I could have taken for vulnerable. I guess that would have been okay. We have to know. Does it work? Scrape, go! No, it wears off before the scrape occurs. We need another scrape. You have to stack scrape. Or uh, a swivel, rather. We need another swivel. If we want to get that to work. Second wind. Or echo form. So I can echo form swivel. Headbutt is cute. Yeah, it's really funny in concept, right? It's, it's a good time. Found a steroid potion. I think I'll leave that on the ground. Duplicate a card in your deck. We actually did find the duplicator, hilariously. Uh, and I think, I think we have to, therefore, have... Wait, like, swivel! That actually wasn't what I was thinking, but you know what, Twitch chat, you're correct. <laughs> like Swivel. Exactly like Swivel. Since I have no mastery candidates. I was going to dupe Eruption and get triple Eruption, but I think the Swivel's even funnier. Lining myself up here. What? Outrageous. I demand a refund. Absolutely skip filing a bug report right now to Mega Crit Games. Literally unplayable. It does say ignore energy cost. It's interesting phrasing. Literally unplayable. <laughs> that was great. The gimmick didn't even work. That was great. <laughs> Disaster. Truly a shame. Ooh, ink bottle sundial. That's a fun two two relic combination. Got the clothesline, don't need the sash whip. Probably don't want blade dance either. But since we do have Scrape, it's worth upgrading secret technique and weapon and such, I suppose. I suppose. Let's start with one of the secret weapons. Flash of Steel. That's pretty good. Second Ragnarok is here. We could remove status cards with a medical kit. That's always fun. This deck in particular would really appreciate being able to get rid of the statuses in the hard fight. And I can buy Flash of Steel and this medical kit. That's kind of cool. One gold short of a Gurya. How tragic. We could have actually gotten all three strength. Card remove swivel? You mean card remove scrape? <laughs> get out of here, you lying card. Now let's do the, the Flash of Steel medical kit thing. That sounds great. Could buy this too. I don't need to. Onwards and upwards. Upgrade two random attacks. 
wasn't two strikes, surprisingly. Really thought that was going to be two strikes. Really, really thought so. All right, buddy. Nemesis, what do you got? The stuff. Thanks for the six months of the Prime sub. Reaching that half year. Strike dummy. These strikes get empowered now. Acrobatics. Wave of the hand plus or burning pact. Interesting. Burning pact. I want a burning pact. I would love to exhaust cards. Getting really close to doing sundial things now. Swift Strike, come back. We don't need Swift Strike. Swift Strike doesn't need us. Seems like blocking against this particular foe is going to be a really miserable experience. Hmm. Chose not to play Vault there. That was a purposeful decision. Play Shackles, and wait one more turn. Perfect. Good. Play this one very carefully. Don't change that. Though I sort of need it need it to, huh? No, we'll just take some more damage. Take two more. Seems acceptable here. You cut through bait. Can't even play Ragnarok currently. Stop there. Slowly whittling away until we can land some sort of finishing blow here. Or deal damage without getting posed in return is the constant goal. This looks pretty good. Take an extra turn. This is the first fight I've really noticed the Slaver's Caller not providing energy. It's also been a thing here. Uh, this kills, right? Yeah, good stuff. Okay, Patience Prevails. Piercing Whale also prevails. Another way to lower enemy strength. I like it. But I have a favorite Brotato. Lucky is my favorite Brotato. Might end up doing some more Brotato today. Depends on how long it takes to finish uh, Super Liminal, which we'll be playing after we do a bit of Spire today. You get him, Hourglass. You got this. Secret technique to find, secret weapon to find... Eruption. And another one, too, also. Yeah. Oh no. Not again. Ooh, 
want Empty Fist, I guess. Suppose we just kill it in two hits, and then we're good. It's gonna be Talk to the Hand, Empty Fist. Yes. That's not so bad. We take six plus three. That's not too bad. Hmm, cold Snap's interesting. Blood for Blood is interesting, too. I suppose we don't need these, though. Spikers have it out for me. I see how it is. You stinky spikers. Could have had two dagger sprays. The perfect spiker solution. Yes, yeah, surely two dagger sprays would improve the situation tremendously. Maybe a bit more. I guess 13 is what we're taking now. 13, 13, 13. Kind of cute. We take 13. Deadly poison. What are you doing here? Memories is pretty strong, actually. I like memories over Gambler's Brew with the current deck. Liquid memories, uh, Ragnarok, liquid memories an important stance change. For safety, we're going to rest here. We could upgrade one more card, but most of our upgrades aren't even that useful. Like I said, I'd be upgrading Burning Pact. We don't need to do that. Let us proceed. Uh, Tim. You ever been smashed in the face a whole bunch, Tim? Like a whole bunch? Almost got him to half health there. Could play Dark Shackles now, or we can wait on it. I think we'll just play it now. Never liked you either, Tim. Icky Monster, thanks for the Prime sub. In 21 months already, two metric years. How the time flies. So I guess we want to phase transition already here, huh? I guess. That's useless also. Time Eater is about to purge debuffs, so this is exactly the wrong time to have talk to the hand. Let's play three cards next turn. Piercing Whale is acceptable. We can prevent two strength loss. Which is kind of silly. But sure. And then Vigilance. We're going to do some fun stuff next turn, looks like. Foolish, foolish, says Tim. Hmm. I'm a secret weapon to get Talk to the Hand in play. Not convinced that's the right move for this turn.
That's better. Perfect. There we go. Three cards next turn, sure. Swivel, swivel, talk to the hand. Seems fine. Take a little bit of damage, but that is A-OK. -okay. Just two more. Still have one swivel in effect. So let's Sands of Time with it. Then I guess Vault immediately, so we can Ragnarok. Four health left as we exit time eater. I think we'll do just fine if we fight Awakened One. We might have a bad time against Donu and Decca. It's Awakened One, thankfully. I think we'll be just fine. I'll bank the energy, or we could just play Empty Fist and lose the two energy from Calm. I don't want to play Vault when we're full blocking anyway. Let's just end turn. Sad call. And then I draw this hand. And I kind of wish I had Vaulted. Fair enough. That's what hit points are for. Rebellion 15, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I think we'd prefer to win phase one with, uh, without using both Talk to the Hands, only using one of them. Hmm. We should Dark Shackles on this turn, that's for sure. Vigilance is a full block. I would suppose that it is. Which tells me I should have played Empty Fist. Noted. Concerning, actually. This does not appear to be in a block. Maybe we play double talk to the hand and then we use burning pact to do sundial things. That's the smarter play. Okay, that's what I should have done from the get-go. And that's the new plan. I'm gonna hang out hang out here in phase one for a while. Ragnarok is enough block, isn't it? I think it is. Okay. Yeah, that's the new plan. This might take a little bit. 
so I do apologize slightly for this new plan that we're developing. Just trust me, it will all be worth it. Eventually. I should have been deleting first, not sure. Zagasu, thanks for 36 months, the three full years of support. Very much appreciated. seem to be accidentally killing the boss. Also undesirable. cards, though. I don't think we can keep the boss alive for the requisite amount of time here. Hmm. Oh well, we can at least optimize it. around a bunch. Okay, seek for another strike. Get rid of it. Staring down 40 damage to the face next turn. With no block at all. That's problematic. Unless I can keep it alive for another turn, then we can prolong our fate slightly, but only slightly. We'll be able to do sundial things. That part's kind of nice. Seems like an overall problem, though. Flash of steel. I'd like to be able to burning pack, so let's leave it as it is. Play the piercing well. Okay. And we're in wrath. In case that matters.
do I need to Ambrosia? I suppose is my first question here. Feels like I might need to. It certainly would help. We get more energy, a lot more energy, and we deal way more damage. We could also employ the Liquid Memories. If, if I use both of them, I'm sure we can kill. That would require buying new potions, but I'm not completely averse to that. Let's start with Ambrosia. Ambrosia into Sands of Time. So we also have 27, 27, 42, 36. Let's go cut through fate next. I think we might be able to do this without using the liquid memories. Seems likely now. Secret weapon. Let's go looking for cut with cut through fate for either Ragnarok or Sands of Time, and then use the secret weapon to get the one we don't find. Or just find neither of them, also acceptable. Looks like we got a kill here. Though I can't do it in one card, that's fine. Perfectly unset up relics, but we did beat Awakened One. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of all these missing hit points. And that should be one of the hardest fights that we have to get through still. Now we're going to take a schnooze, go back to full HP. We're going to buy a potion at the shop. Probably. We can also buy Trip. Cauldron would give us a choice of five potions. Otherwise, we take a swift potion. Mr. Ninja with five months. Hello. I think I'll take the cauldron here, unironically. Look at five potions. Choose the best one. That should be all we need. Remove is also pretty good, although I wouldn't call it as good as a good potion. Likewise, Wheel Kick could be somewhat strong. You could make an argument for Wheel Kick and Swift Potion, definitely. Let's buy the Cauldron. We get Fruit Juice, which we drink. And our choice of Cultist Flex, Liquid Bronze, or Fairy in a bottle. I'll take the Fairy. Seems pretty encouraging. And I'll keep the Liquid Memories. Good job, Cauldron. Tim Tim with two months in the Prime sub. Much appreciated. There are some who call me Tim Tim. I'd like you to die first. Let's see if that ends up working out. Please draw me some cards. Not those cards, though. That one's fine. I can just hard cast Sands of Time and still play Vault. With Miracle, I can play all of these. Might as well. Might as well. We do Talk to the Hand, then Ragnarok, then Dark Shackles, from the looks of it. This turn could be... bad. That's pretty bad. That might require the Liquid Memories. Currently we're blocking eight. This would be four by ten. Or ten by four, rather. Yeah, we should use liquid memories, just win this fight. 
Make our life a lot easier. We get Dead Branch. When we exhaust a card, add a random card to our hand. That's pretty sweet. And I like Meditate as well, allowing us to exit our Wrath Stance and put a card into our hand from the discard pile. Secret technique to fetch secret weapon. Secret weapon to fetch, talk to the hand. In the heart fight, it's imperative that we get both talk to the hands in play as soon as possible. And look at that, they're both in play. That was easy. I like it. Now, do I vault or what? I think we do vault. Nice judgment. This scrape could get a couple of things. Let's take a cut through fate first. Oh, shoulda scraped. Coulda, shoulda, woulda, didn't. Still can though. Discarded Descender's Bane. Good work. I'm immune to frail. You can't hurt me. Piercing Whale coming up. All statuses always has been. Tempting to use Miracle to play that Devil Forum. Just tank the hit here. Uh, let's play the Wound first. Can also do Swivel and Like Water. But I think we want to play Devil Forum. More energy, more better. We're guaranteed to Piercing Whale next turn, so we always stay alive for two, two more turns. And we have Fairy in a Bottle after that. So I say we Devil Forum. Uh, I can do better than that. We can either play like water or strike for six more block. I'll take the block. We've had first Devaform, yes, but what about second Devaform? No, I think we probably prefer to play clothesline and meditate. We don't need the second one. Protect is kind of cool. And then meditate what for next turn? Worship? No. Like water? Eruption? What if we get stuck in wrath? Don't worry about it. That's what foresight is for. We gotta do damage here. Perfect. Guess we're just discarding worship. Or I could meditate worship to set up divinity next turn. Actually, that seems kind of cool. Let's do that. Then I have divinity double sands of time next turn. I like that a lot. Just take a regular strike here. 
Any skills I want to l remove from the draw pile? Let's secret technique to get rid of Wreath of Flame. Or actually, better yet, Judgment. Get rid of Judgment here. And then we meditate. Worship. Here goes. Actually, not 100% sure about this maneuver. We have a multi-hit coming up. Be my preference that we try to block this. Okay, with Ragnarok, we can definitely block this. And then next turn, we have Fairy in a Bottle. So I think we're good. I think we have everything we need here. I'm going to go Swivel. Worship. Ragnarok. Give him the Blip Blap. Actually, don't even need to use Sands of Time this turn, which means we can hold on to them for one more turn. Give me Cutthroat Fate. Devotion is cute. Okay, completely capped damage. That means we're allowed to play powers. I guess we can empty fist also. Good time. Good times. Let's lose Sweeping Beam. Scrape can now draw the Sands of Times. That's kind of cool, actually. Nothing got kept. enough to stay alive. 47 incoming. We're currently blocking 21 plus 13. Do 16 more. So 32, 37. Take 10. Yeah, we do live. Might as well. Can also block slightly more by playing strike here. We have Deva form, so I might as well. I live. I refuse to not live. Just a hundred health left. Big hit first. You got it. Don't mind if I do, in fact. So we want to secret technique for that secret weapon. So we can do Ragnarok. Splash of Steel. Secret weapon to get Ragnarok back. GG. Be free, my fairy friend. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.